Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechViews Nup and today I'm going to tell you the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. You may have seen it on some software that you might have downloaded or maybe purchased in the cert door or maybe even some operation systems. Maybe it'll say it's a 32-bit operation system or a, a 64 OS. So anyways, before we jump into this real quick explanation on the difference and the importance on the difference, let me get into a quick personal advertisement and that way you can help me make this channel grow a lot quicker and better than I could do just on my own. If you would like to support us at TechFuse Note, then please do one or all of the following. What you can do is you can select the Tech Fusion Help logo at the top and this will take you to our Tech Fusion Help YouTube page or you can select the PayPal button that will take you to our PayPal donation page or you can select the Patreon campaign button and that will take you to our Patreon campaign. Now saying that if you don't have the financial means or you already done that or whatever it may be and you don't want to do that but you still want to support us you can also do some of the following you can leave a like and share the this video and any other video that you want from us and maybe even our channel and tell people why you like us so other people can come and enjoy this and also help build up this community you can also if if you like to help us but you dislike a certain video for whatever reason go ahead and leave a dislike but tell us what you don't like about it so we can fix it in the future and also as always please feel free to subscribe and check out our other videos and when you're checking out our videos if you really want to support us just go ahead and drop the ad blockers and that way we can get our revenue but if you feel for, if you want to continue to use your ad blockers, then feel free to do so. It's not like I'm not doing it. Welcome back. Now, what we're going to do for the layout of this is we're going to talk about the minimum and maximums. Then we're going to talk about the operating system and then software how's the 32-bit for 64-bit affect operating systems and the software. And that way we can have clean layout. So one thing I want to mention before we jump on in is the minimums, it doesn't really apply to software, but it will apply to operating systems. But the maximums always apply to everything across the board. So it, that's a huge thing to keep in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind is you can run a 32-bit uh, uh, software on a 64-bit operating system and 64-bit software on a 64-bit operating system, but you shouldn't, I've seen it done, but you shouldn't run a 64-bit software on a 32-bit operating system. I'll get into that in a bit. That's, that's something else to keep in mind while we're going through this next part. So. As far as the minimum and maximums, the minimums, again, this is affecting more the operating system than software. I'll get into why in a second. The minimums for 32 bit is one gigabyte. For 64, it's two gigabytes. You can run it below that, but it won't run correctly or it shouldn't. For maximum, for 32 bit, it's four gigabytes. 60 it's 64 bit is 2048 gigabytes now keep in mind these are roundabout numbers these out exact numbers have a lot of digits past that but just round it up it's, it's this so one thing to keep in mind is the 32 bit there is more limitations and than you might think especially with operating systems the four gigabytes is not really four gigabytes because your video card could count against it if it requires, say, a gigabyte 
of RAM, then you got a buffer on the operating system, and maybe some other things you use require some in order for it to work. That will count against the four gigabytes. So you can easily see it around two and a half gigabytes easily. Uh, you know, video card requiring a gig and a buffer of a half gig. And um, and that, that's that's a huge thing to keep in mind because you can easily end up with half or or just about half or, or even less in some cases, depending on how much RAM you really have. One thing I will advise though is if you do have four gigabytes and you cannot upgrade past four gigabytes, you might as well just run a 32-bit operating system if you have that choice. You won't have that choice in future cases and even right now in some cases you want that choice but anyways as far as the 64 bits again we got a 2,448 gigabyte limit well past then yeah, we never got close to that it's just simple fact is is there's really no computer that even gets remotely close to that I've seen computers get up to 100 maybe 150 gigabytes just for the fun of it and those are very very customized computers but that's nowhere near 2048 it's nowhere near even a thousand so as far as w there is a drop-off point so where is the drop-off point let's talk about if you're a novice maybe a grandparent that's just checking their email uh, maybe printing, doing basic, basic, basic things like that. Maybe once in a while watching a video on the internet. You're looking at eight gigabytes and you're gonna have a drop off where there's no point in buying any more. It's just that you're, the price versus the amount. Now, one thing I will add in here is if you wanted to, you can take a look at your specifications for your current computer if you're buying a narrow one. And look at your specifications for your next computer if the RAM matches up then you can actually take the RAM from your current computer put it onto your new computer and get more RAM or a better RAM in many cases I've done on many of my computers and instead of paying whatever company to for the upgrade I just took RAM from my old computer and put it in my new computer and went well of course look at your specifications so in some cases you can put more so these are not hard numbers and this depends on the scenarios but anyways your average person and this being a college person and by the way the novice is also someone who's an elementary so a grandparent elementary person some, something like that your novice person or your average person average person being high school college work um, you know basic work things like that I'll say 16 gigabytes and you're probably not going to see any true benefits you could go up to easy to 22 um, I've had computers up to that and I've easily seen even in my case programming things like that I've, I've seen some massive improvements but for the most part the uh, you probably won't see much benefit past that but for the most advanced, the extreme cases, and um, and the most extreme case I've ever heard, someone basically maxing out all their computer all together, customizing a computer just for the RAM to test this out. What's been found in statistics and studies is the the max you'll ever really get at this time, 2015 have a computer and have that drop off rate is 60 to 70 gigabytes of RAM and this is the max of the max and this this is not even the the um, the, the person who, who uh, uses all the resources their computer this is well beyond that so that's just something to keep in mind and something even go well beyond that to push it to the limits of most of today's computers 60 to 70 gigabytes and then you'll see a dramatic drop in in quality and, and price uh, a, a increase in price and dramatic drop in quality so that's a huge thing to keep in mind is um, 
what is your range? Your circumstances might be completely different. But I'll, I'll say for an average person, 16 gigabytes is more than enough. So that, that's something to keep in mind. If you're running virtual machines, you might run a little bit more than that, by the way. So, as far as 64-bit versus 32-bit in operating systems terms, one thing to keep in mind is with current day Windows, Windows 8, Windows 10, and, and most likely future versions of Windows, 32-bit versions of Windows does not require a signature from the driver. However, 64-bit requires a signature from the driver. What does this mean? It basically means that um, in order for, and there's a way to get around this, but the average person probably shouldn't really ever try it. 64-bit, since it requires a signature, what, will, what happens is the, and, and here's the thing, here, this is very important, what does the signature really mean? Well, a signature, it's basically um, only provided to trusted developers and Microsoft and, and other things like that. And here's why 64-bit requires it. 32-bit really should get to the point where it needs to require it, but since Microsoft is out phasing it, you might not go and see that. The, um, s uh, the signature, it, it basically makes it a trusted individual who's making the driver and the reason why you want a trusted individual to make the driver is the fact that the driver can control anything on a computer this includes rootkits putting malware or maybe uh, doing some positive things which most drivers do so if you have a unsigned driver you can easily get some rootkits you can get some nasty 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 things things that you have to completely wipe your system in order to even get back to normal and that means reinstalling everything that you want to make sure you do it in a safe manner very important note that how can you see signatures well it's pretty easy i'm running windows 8 windows 8.1 in fact um i got modified version you can go to the search i'm just going to go to the start and just go to the device sorry about that I blanked out for a second device manager click enter and again over here you can do go into the search but anyways as far as this goes this is where you can see your drivers so for example display driver Let's take a look at the AMD. You can double click it or you can go into the properties. And to see the signature, you just click the driver tab. And as you see here, you can see the signature. So you'll see it pretty much on any of these. Let's go down to keyboards. And as you see here, let's try to find something that's not. I'll be right back and I'll try to find something that's not Microsoft. Unfortunately, I don't have anything particular. But how do you know if a driver is unsigned? It's right here. And as you see right here, it says not digitally signed. Obviously, I'm running a 64-bit system. And again, there's ways to get around this requirement but it's not recommended and you might have one or two things on your system and without knowing you might went around the requirements but um, but for the most part how, how, how do you protect your system just go through this list and to see which is on your system I want to re recommend going to the, the registry keys. I'm not going to get into what it, that is in this video because that's way too advanced. That's that's on the up in the stream advanced. In fact, if you even 
mess with one character in those areas, you can completely wreck your system. So I'll stick to something like arounds here and, and take a look at all this stuff and make sure that you recognize things. Um, also keep in mind within this area, just while I'm here, you can update drivers and disable them and some other stuff. I wouldn't recommend disabling or uninstalling if um, even if you don't recognize them. Uh, try to get someone who's, who's who you trust with computers to take a look at them. Keep note of which ones you don't recognize or don't trust. And that way they can take a look at it and say, is it good, is it not? Because um, even though you don't know it or don't trust it, it can be very... Like, say for example, if I um, didn't trust this one, this could potentially uh, keep me from going back on a computer uh, or on the internet. Uh, so, some of these, not all of these. But still, that's that's one thing to keep in mind is write down ones you don't trust, ones you don't recognize, and have someone look at it that that, that you trust, uh, someone that's not going to charge you, and they can take a quick look at it and say, oh, this is fine, oh, don't, don't worry about it, and you should be completely fine. But as far as things goes in the future, it's pretty much going to be mandatory. We're all drivers are going to have to be signed so that's very very important to note and i think windows 10 they're actually going to implement that so you're pretty much going to see that but again there's going to be ways around it so companies can upload their own stuff on their own systems but for the most part it protects the system from the average user doing something that they don't know they don't know anything better they plug it in something oh it's a uh um, something that they thought was good, it, it, it downloads the driver the, the, off the USB and finds that it's not signed, it won't, it won't have anything to do with it because that unsigned driver might carry on some malware, some root kits, and some bad, nasty things, and, um, and Microsoft's getting to the point where they will stop that altogether, and that's patching up a hole as you might say. Now let's get into the last part of this. The software wise, again, you can run a 64-bit software on a 64-bit operating system, 32-bit on a 64-bit, 32-bit on a 32-bit, but it's not recommended ever to run a 64-bit software on a 32-bit operating system. The reason for this is again the, the uh, maximums like uh, with software they don't really care too much about the minimums and the reason for this is the software even if it's 64 bit it might only really need about 10 megabytes maybe more at times depending on the software and i've seen it where th this is the case where it only needs very 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 little well well below then the minimum memory that an operating system would need and um, it's fine so so just because you run a say for example a program and it says it's 32 bit that doesn't mean that you automatically have a gigabyte being used and uh, for 64 bit that doesn't automatically mean you're running six uh, two gigabytes um, right there you can easily be running say a megabyte of memory and uh, that's it, that's all that's required. But it could go up to whatever the amount is for 32 bit, 4 gigabytes, for 64, it's 2048. Now, one thing I want to mention is it's, and this is my personal preference, I recommend that with most software, if it's not a game, and if it's not video editing, for most software, run it in 32-bit. Uh, and also, it's not security camera stuff. If it's something like a creative deal, like maybe programming, maybe uh, maybe a, a game, maybe graphic design, something around that point, video editing, something like that. Go ahead with the 64-bit version. 
if it's a um, application that will be used across multiple other applications same thing go ahead with 64-bit but if it's something like say for example word if it's something like a text document if it's something very basic like email uh, maybe I, I don't know maybe a browser that's a little up to you on that one but something like um, a picture viewer something like that 32-bit is probably going to help you out because if something happens uh, you know somehow the thing's going to start demanding the uh, a huge huge amount of, of uh, RAM the 32-bit will limit it and that's again my personal opinion again things that you need the 64-bit go ahead things you don't need it for like Word Outlook uh, Outlook's questionable again uh, browser's questionable but something like Word a um, picture viewer something like that 32 bits probably the way to go with that but anyways as far as that goes um, hopefully this has answered your questions on 32 bit versus 64 bit and hopefully this has helped you out on deciding if you should get a 32-bit versus 64-bit operating system or a 32-bit versus 64-bit uh, software. Keep in mind, some of these things may change in the future as far as requiring digital signatures and things like that. But the minimum and maximum, especially the maximum, will never change unless if the terminology completely changes which I 100% doubt most likely what you'll see is something like 128 bit or something like that instead of um, redefining what's already there so as far as that goes if you have any questions then please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible also if you have any tips or tricks that you want to add feel free to leave that below and that way it helps everybody out now, if you like this video, please leave a like, please subscribe, and please share. If you didn't find this helpful, then please leave a dislike, but tell me why you're leaving a dislike so I can improve it in future videos. Also, if you want, please visit the techviewsnup.com. Please visit the, our Patreon campaign and our PayPal donation. Also, please check out our other videos, and I hope you have a great day.